Jesus, we thank you that no matter who we are, no matter what our struggles are in life, no matter what age we are, that you love us and that you have a place for us by your grace. In your name we pray. Amen. So as a pastor, one of the places that I frequently visit is a hospital. And I'm just going to be straight up with you. One of what I believe is the groups of people that is uh, most underappreciated are those who are our nurses. And so I just want to say this morning, if you are here and you are a nurse or you have served as a nurse, can we, can we just say thank you this morning? Because nurses are some of the most gracious people that I know. Nurses are the people who are there for us when we are at our worst. Because I don't know whether you're aware of this or not, but hospitals are places where sick people go. And sick people make messes. I mean, you can go to the hospital and and there are all kinds of bodily fluids that at some point in time come out from all of these different orifices. Some of you are like, TMI, Pastor. I, I know, it's a lot, but that's why we love our nurses, because they are there. Because when we are sick and when we're puking our guts out, they're not like, ew, gross, like I can't be with you right now. No, that's exactly when they show up and they compassionately serve and they care for us when we are at our worst. And that's where we want to go this weekend as we continue our Lenten teaching series, Grace Stories. Because we're going to take a look at the story of a man who is sick. And not like puking his guts out sick. We're going to talk about a man who is sick in another way. And sometimes we use that word in a different way in our society today. Like we'll say to somebody who is doing something wrong or saying something wrong, like, dude, that is so sick. That is so disgusting. And that's what we're going to encounter in our story today as we take a look at a man named Levi. And his story in Luke chapter 5. And here's what you need to know about Levi. Levi is a tax collector. Think IRS. I know it doesn't give you the warm fuzzies, does it? It doesn't give you that same level of appreciation and respect as you have for those who are nurses. If I said this morning, hey, why don't we give a little bit of appreciation to those who work for the IRS, I can bet that we won't be clapping like we just did. And it was even worse in the first century. Like, tax collectors were scoundrels. Tax collectors were sellouts to Rome. Tax collectors were disgusting and despicable because they collected what Rome said they needed to collect and then they fudged the numbers. They lied. And they did a little five-finger discount for themselves. That's who tax collectors are. Yeah, not the greatest of people. In fact, there's a a writer named Lucian who was a Greek writer during this time. And he took tax collectors and he put them in the same category as those who were adulterers. And that's who Levi is. He's a tax collector. He's a dirty, rotten, sick scoundrel. But there's something else about Levi. Maybe that makes it even worse. Because Levi was likely a Levite. I mean, that, that, that's where he would have gotten his name, Levi. Because likely he comes from a long line of Levites. And, and who are the Levites? Well, if the tax collectors are the scoundrels of society, the Levites are the upstanding people of society. They're, they're the priestly class. They're the pastors. They're the worship leaders. They're the ones who serve at the temple. And this is Levi. At least it was. At some point in time in his story, he was being groomed to step into that role. And then he went off the rails. He's like, you know what? Forget about the ministry. I'm in it for the money. And he becomes a dirty, rotten tax collector. He's a disgrace. He's an embarrassment to his family. And then he meets Jesus. 
He's sitting in his tax collector booth in Capernaum. Jesus happens past, and what's his reaction to Levi? It's not like, ew, gross, like, keep a distance from him. He's a sickie. No, Jesus is like, dude, (laughs) you look like you're struggling. You look like you got some issues that you're dealing with. I can help. Come, follow me. And and what ensues is is this beautiful moment where, where Levi just leaves everything behind and he starts to follow Jesus. And the first thing that he does is he goes and he finds all of his friends. He finds all of those tax collectors, all of those sinners, all of those sickies, and he's like, guys, you got to come and meet a man who, who completely transformed my life. And you see this in Luke chapter 5 in what can only be described as happy hour at the hospital. Like, here's all of these people who are sick and they're wheeling themselves in and they're puking their guts and they're like, this is where we need to be. And they're finding help and healing from Jesus. But then there are the Pharisees who crash the party. And they show up and they pull Jesus' disciples aside and they're like, hey, how come you guys are eating with tax collectors and air quotes, sinners? And before we're harsh toward the Pharisees, let's just pause and realize that they had good intentions because the Pharisees didn't want to get infected They didn't want to get sick. And we're the same way. Like, think as parents. You tell your kids to be careful who they hang out with, right? There's certain people that's like, "Uh, I wouldn't hang out with them. They're not making good choices right now. Because 1 Corinthians 15.33 says, bad company corrupts good character. You can have the best of intentions, and yet you hang out with the wrong crowd And they infect you. You can be healthy, hang out with someone who's sick, and you end up sick yourself. And this is what the Pharisees wanted to avoid. You know, I think about COVID. If COVID showed us anything, it was how to be cautious in the midst of a a virus that we could not understand and we could not treat. And so you watched how people responded to COVID. You watched as people started to keep their distance. They started to quarantine. They started to wear extra PPE because they didn't want to get sick. They didn't want to get infected. And it changed us. Like, just just try this social experiment. Actually, don't. but, But imagine getting on an airplane and somebody starts coughing. Like, I'm talking like, <coughs> like five minutes straight of coughing. And watch how people react. Watch how many people start to pull away. And look at people's eyes. And watch them start to talk with each other. And I can guarantee you there are some people who are like, they shouldn't be on this plane right now. They need to get off. I mean, that's, that's the Pharisees. They don't want to become infected with this sickness that these sinners have. And what's Jesus' response? I mean, this, this is great. This, this is the center of our text from Luke chapter 5, verses 31 and 32. It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. See, Jesus here identifies himself as a doctor. In fact, we talk about Jesus as the great physician. And what makes someone a good doctor? Does a good doctor see somebody who's sick and is like, no, no, I can't be around you because I don't want to get sick myself. No, a good doctor, just like a good nurse, goes to people when they are at their worst, when they are at their sickest, and they show up and they help them in order that they can nurse them back to health in order that they can make them better. And that's why Jesus goes to this group of sickies at Levi's house, because they're sick. 
Because they've made a mess of their lives and because he wants to do something to make it better. But in that he takes a risk. Because here's the thing. Sometimes as a doctor or as a nurse, when you show up to help people when they are at their worst, you end up getting infected yourself. You know, I was reading a story about a doctor down in Houston, Texas, and his name was Carlos Aruja Perez. And he specialized in treating respiratory diseases. And so back in 2020, when COVID hit, he was there. He was on the front lines. He was taking all of the precautions, but for months he was working with patients until October of 2020 when he contracted that very same virus that he had been treating in others. And two weeks later, he was on a ventilator himself, and two weeks after that, he was dead. I mean, that's what can happen. It's a tragic risk that medical professionals take to put themselves on the front lines and to be there for people when they are at their worst. Because sometimes they're the ones who end up getting sick, and sometimes they're the ones who end up dying which is exactly what happened with Jesus. The one who is the great physician is the one who is infected with the same spiritual sickness as the rest of us. So Isaiah chapter 53, verse 4 says this of Jesus. He took up our infirmities. He carried our sicknesses. And as a result, he died. He was crucified, died, and buried. The doctor goes down. And yet Jesus' death was different. Because it was not a tragedy, it was all a part of God's plan. Because if, if the worst could do its worst to Jesus, and yet Jesus could still come out alive on the other side, which is exactly what he did in the resurrection, then somehow that sickness is not the end. That somehow that sickness which infects our own heart and soul is not the end for us either. And so Isaiah chapter 53 verse 5 continues, by his wounds we are healed. So here's what that means for all of us. Jesus heals sickies. That's what I want you to know today. Jesus heals sickies. And guess what? We're all sickies. Just like Levi, if we're willing to admit it, we are all sick. We've all made a mess of our lives, whether we come from a religious home or not. We're all sick with sin. And what did Jesus come to do? Remember what he said? It's not the healthy that need a doctor, but the sick. I've not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. So here's the thing that's embedded within this story from Luke chapter 5. It's, it's how do we treat people who are sick? Do we back away from them? Do we say, when sick people enter the church, you need to leave because we don't want to become infected? No. The way that you treat sick people is you treat them. Because here's what I believe. I believe that the church is supposed to be a hospital for sinners. It's called to be a grace place. It's called to be a place where people have made a mess of their lives. And, and they're puking their guts out. And, and not to be told that they're disgusting. But like a good nurse. Like a good doctor. To have somebody who will hold their hand. And who will say, there's help and there's healing for you in Jesus. And we're going to get through this together. You know, some people think that the church is a place for people who are good. People who have, who have cleaned their lives up. And it's not. Because remember what Jesus said. I've not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. The church is a hospital for sinners. The church is a grace place for those who know that they are bad, for those who know that they are sick and they need help. And I think that's key to this entire conversation. 
Because there's two types of sick people in the world. There's those who are sick and they don't want to admit it. And you've been around those people. Like they're coughing, they're hacking, they're struggling. You're like, are you okay? And they're like, yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine. Maybe you should go see a doctor. No, I'm fine. Only they're not. You know what happens to sick people who never get help? They die. That's the way the Bible talks about sickness in our lives. Ephesians chapter 2, which we read earlier today, says that we are dead in our transgressions and sins. So that, that's one type of sick people, people who are unwilling to admit it. But there's another type of sick people, people who are willing to admit that they are sick. And the only type of sick people that get admitted to the hospital are those who admit that they're sick. Like, if you're sick and you're not going to admit it, you don't get admitted to the hospital. If you're sick and you're like, I'm fine, it's not that big of a deal, you don't get the help that you need. But the church is called to be a hospital for the sick. It's to be a place where people walk in these doors and they're like, I'm not good. I'm not healthy right now. I'm struggling in life. And we say, you're welcome here. Because this is a place where people who are sick find help and healing in Jesus. Because the church is a place where people can be puking their guts out, literally or figuratively. And there's going to be somebody who's there to hold their hand and say, we're going to get through this together. Because there's help and healing that is available for you in Jesus. You know, I, I was thinking about this when it came to this Grace Story series, and I was, I was talking to our staff about this. I said, get ready, because as we talk about these stories of grace in Scripture, and as they rub up against the everyday lives of people here at St. John's, get ready, because there are going to be opportunities for grace to be given to others around us. And at times, it's going to be messy. You know, I, I look at my last week. No less than five different conversations I had with members from our church and our community who are struggling, whose lives are a mess. These are young people. Like, these are teenagers. These are people who are in their 20s. And some of the stuff that they're dealing with, like, this is difficult. It's hard. We've got people who have gone through drug addictions. You've got people who are struggling with family dysfunction. People who have, who have been in a committed relationship that's just blown up and now they're dealing with the leftovers of that and they're like, what, what do I do? And as they're sharing these stories with me, like it's gritty. And there's an edge to some of these stories and there's an edge to their words and sometimes it's like they are just puking their guts out. And there's a part of you, if I shared some of the details with you, and I'm not going to, but if I shared some of the details of their stories with you, you would be disgusted. You'd be like, really? And there would be that temptation to turn away. But we don't do that. And I don't do that. Because these are people who admit that they're sick. And it's only those who admit that they're sick that get admitted to the hospital. And so when you admit that you need help, that you're not well, that's where Jesus shows up, and that's where Jesus offers grace, and that's what we are called to be as a church. And I can tell you that in these conversations that I've had with these people, that they are finding that. They are discovering grace, they're discovering forgiveness, they're discovering healing, because this is what the church is supposed to be. The church is a grace place. The church is a hospital for sinners. And you're all welcome. Amen.